Get It Done 2021 is not over. Last season on DIY Mom, I transformed a 1950s bungalow into a mid-century modern dream house. But we're back with season five and I'm rolling up my sleeves and putting on my gardening gloves to take a hand in landscaping. That's right, my outdoor garden and backyard are getting a facelift. It's like a Marx Brothers routine. So far, so good. Ah, are you kidding me? The trick is you just have to struggle. I'm Rebecca Higgs and I renovate homes. I didn't really know what I was doing when I started and sometimes I still don't. Oh, there's the mummy. But with the help of my trusty crew. Oh. You're not gonna be overwhelmed. My loving and patient family. The heck? I know I can always get the job done. Life is a never ending adventure Whoa. when you're a DIY mom. <laughs> The inside of my house is complete and it looks gorgeous, but the front yard is a total disaster. It's a mess and it's embarrassing. It is looking like a vast desert out here. There are dirt patches where there should be grass and there's a lot of rubble where there should be beautiful gardens. I'm sure my neighbors think I'm crazy and they don't know what I did by tearing out all those shrubs, but I have a plan, I have a vision, I just need to bring it to life. So now we've got to rebuild it and make it a total modern oasis so that everybody thinks, okay, she knows what she's doing. When we trenched the inside of my house, we were left with a ton of rubble and somehow that rubble just ended up in my front yard and never got moved. So it's been sitting there for, I don't know, six months and driving me crazy. So the other day, Julie and I took my leftover wood from last year's deck renovation and created a frame in the front of the house to build off of the existing concrete pad and to keep going on the front of the house. I think it'll be a nice stoop area and I think it'll have a nice mid-century modern look to it. It won't be blocking the house like the old shrubs. Then we shoveled the rubble that was still sitting in the front of my house into the frame that we built but the rubble wasn't gonna sit level enough, so we went out and grabbed a ton of crusher dust and filled in the rest of the space with the crusher dust. So we still have to do a little bit more leveling with the crusher dust, tamp it down. I was kind of thinking in my mind it would be great just to do a full concrete pad, get a dump truck in and bada bing, bada boom, we would have a front stoop. But Julie kind of mentioned to me that eventually it would crack. Julie, why you always gotta be the bearer of bad news? Yeah, if we did all of this in concrete and just painted it over the whole thing, it, the ground could heave. We'd have to get 36 inch footings into the ground to make that not happen and have some seams so that they don't split. So it, I think the look with the with the stones is gonna be really nice. So these are the stones that you saw, you found at Home Depot and you recommended them because they're 24 by 24 inch. We can kind of make it look like a concrete pad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we can put a bit of concrete patch and paint paint that accent color on here. Yeah, Yeah, so we need to trim down the wood a bit so that it's level. What do you think, Ziggy? Do you approve? Do you approve? Now that we have a plan that won't fail us, it's time to get to work. Yeah, so I had to take down a lot of crusher dust that we had piled on there because we're going level with that concrete pad. Dust what do you mean? All that pile? hard work I did the other day, piling up all the crusher dust? Yeah, but too Not much. Not a sore back for nothing, Julie. <laughs> Jeez. Look at us, just arguing like an old married couple. Is this gonna be the season that Julie and I get into a big row? Stay tuned. <laughs> just kidding, Julie, you're still my BFF. 
we were a bit high because the foundation of the house is right there and the brick is above it. So you should stay below that so water doesn't penetrate into the house through oh. the mortar. So are we gonna like have the tiles angled slightly towards the front so the water drips forward? Yeah, there'll be some grating and we're gonna match the grating on this concrete pad and follow it along this way so that everything kind of slowly drips towards the garden of okay. the plants. Well, thank goodness you're here because I would have just made everything level and flooded my house. Ah. <laughs> now Ziggy wants to get in on the action. Ziggy, what are you doing? We just worked so hard leveling that all out. Let's get the wet saw going. So this is the tile saw that Rebecca got on Kijiji. We're gonna cut this 24 inch tile, so I just made a guide on the side and I used some leftover plywood to make a little bit of a bigger table. So we're just, we're just gonna score it and crack it and <laughs> see how it goes. All right, so my $25 Kijiji purchase might be a tad sketchy. I was ready to give up, but then Julie just made a jig. So now we can keep going on. There's more water in it this time. <laughs> ah, it's shooting right in my face. <laughs> yeah, we don't have the rain guard. <laughs> ah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> 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 we did it! It's in half! We've made progress. Do people say progress or progress? We've made progress, but you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Okay, so a little update on what's happening in the front yard. We managed to build up the garden beds around the front stoop area with all that leftover stone that we pulled out of my house. Like, remember when we were trenching and we pulled all that stone out of the house? I put it to use making a nice edge for my new garden beds in the front of the house. So all the stones are piled on top of each other and Julie and I took the landscaping fabric, tucked it into the rocks, backfilled it with dirt so that they will all stay in place and the dirt won't drain out when we water it. And then we put the various plants that I had. So my mom gave me some from her property. Julie gave me some from her property. I transplanted a few from around this property. It's pretty much been a zero budget <laughs> front garden. And um, then we topped it off with some mulch. So I think it's all coming together very nicely. I've also been working hard on the front lawn, but the seed has not been sprouting. So I kind of cheated a little bit because I found a pile of sod on the side of the road. It had been just left there to die. So, you know, I did my duty as a good citizen and saved it. Now I have uh, some grass growing where grass was not growing before. The grass I rescued is a minuscule amount in comparison to my massive lawn. I'm gonna need another pallet to properly sit on my throne as the queen of lawn care in this neighborhood. Now that everything else is looking pretty good, we are ready to paint the existing concrete that you can still see. But before we paint it, we're gonna use some of the leftover level that we have and level the walkway. And then after the self-level sets, we should be able to paint everything in a similar gray tone that will tie in beautifully with the paving stones that are on my front stoop. Julie wanted some shade, so I went out and bought her this shade sail, but uh, we couldn't really figure out how to get it high enough so that we could have some shade while we work on the path, but we made it work. It's all set up for break time. <laughs> Are you comfy there on the sod? Yeah. The sod is fulfilling its sod destiny. <laughs> Not paying you just to lay around on grass all day, Julie. Get to work. <laughs> I'm just checking out the quality. <laughs> We are currently experiencing a heat wave here in Halifax, and the scorching temperatures are less than ideal for landscaping. What this heat wave calls for would be poolside and lemonade at hand, 
but instead I have a high water bill because Julie has an interesting way of cooling up. Cue the wet t-shirt montage. This is where there's a major dip in the walkway and the water is always pooling. So we're gonna use the self-leveler here, but first we have to prime it. So I'm just gonna use leftover primer that we had. I'm using all the leftovers this season. Oh man, this is like such deja vu. Back to self-leveling. It's a trigger word for me. Making self-leveler without this the automatic drill bit. <laughs> you don't not need drill bits when you got these pipes. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, did this little hack ever save us from some major back pain and chiropractor bills. Bye-bye, Red. And it looked a lot more brown. Like right now, it looks very white. Yeah, hopefully it dries darker. Yeah. If it's not the right color, then I guess I'll just know that I have to always do it myself. I can't rely on anybody else to pick colors. I gotta be the one that picks the color. <laughs> My front yard is really starting to come together beautifully. I just love the new exterior gardens. It really matches my mid-century modern vibe of the bungalow. And I did it on the cheap. Stay tuned to see what's in store for me and the team in episode two coming right up. Check out my website, DIYMom.ca, for more tips, tricks, and DIY inspiration. <laughs> <laughs>